and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's video, I want to show you something that you ask like a million times. It's one of the most talk things whenever I ask you what you want to know. And we are going to start talking about migration. In today's video, we are going to talk about lift and shift migration and see if that is possible in serverless. So if this is something you're interested in, keep watching. Migrating to serverless is one of the most common conversations, talks in conferences, every time we discuss uh, with some customers, it's rare that people have a clean slate, a green field to start going into uh, serverless. They usually have some existing application and they want to put it in a serverless architecture. There are many ways to do that and we will be talking about that over more and more videos. But today I want to talk about lift and shift that in a way is like the simplest migration. You can take it as. <laughs> uh, but the idea is to grab the existing app, lift it, shift it and put it in a different place. That's why the name. This is Quite easy to do, for example, if you're working with Docker, you can move it from one service to another, and that's great. Or one cloud platform to another, or on-premise to the cloud. That's what Docker is meant to do. But what about serverless applications? Can we do the same? The simple answer is yes, but. <laughs> there is always but. Whenever you're doing a lift and shift application, you need to have some considerations in mind. If you want to switch your application from a traditional uh, server architecture or Docker architecture or container architecture to a Lambda function or any uh, serverless ephemeral computing place. The first thing is that functions are stateless and that will create some issues <laughs> that we will address in this series. Second, you have the size limitation. With Lambda functions, you can have a deployed package of 256 megabytes. And that's a challenge for a lot of applications because the idea is not to grab a huge application with all its dependencies and throw it into Lambda. So that's something you have to have in mind. And another consideration to have is that your Lambda function will run for a maximum of 15 minutes. So you have longer processes. Mm. But having said so, many applications can benefit of moving to serverless. And Many applications with little tweaks here and there, as I will be showing in this series, but not today, <laughs> can benefit from a lift and shift migration. You can benefit from the scalability capabilities of Lambda, that it's like the best thing ever. You can benefit from the pay-as-you-go model, because sometimes we have these small applications that are not running all the time, and if you have them in a traditional server, you have to run them all the time. And with Lambda, you can even fall in the free tier forever. So that's something nice. Also, you can benefit from the hands-off approach of Lambda, where you don't have to maintain a server or any infrastructure. You just basically package your application in the right way. So lift and shift might sound a little scary for Lambda applications, and maybe it's not the way that you will benefit from all the event-driven and uh, the right architectures, but it's a right step forward. So. In this series, and in particular in this video, I want to show you how to lift and shift a Node Express application into a Lambda function. In the whole series, I will be digging deeper into the problems that you will find, into the challenges that you will find, and we will be working with a more complex application as time moves forward. Let me know in the comments, what are your challenges? Why you have not migrated? Or if you have migrated to serverless from a traditional application, what you have faced. I would love to hear your comments, your opinions, your difficulties, and I can build more content around this topic to help you out. And regarding that, if you like this type of topic, give me a like, give me a subscribe if you're not subscribed because more is coming and you need to be tuned in. So let's get started with today's video. I told you that today we are going to do a lift and shift of a Node Express application. But if you're doing uh, any kind of other web application, don't leave yet because what I will show you will work for you as well. But I will just show you the example with Node. For doing what I will be doing today, I will be using a new open source project that we have been working on that is called the AWS Lambda Adapter. This project basically allows you to grab any web application you have 
put it into Lambda and then basically it will translate all the HTTP requests from API gateway, functions or else, load balancer or whatever into your web application. So if your web application has roots of any kind, then like get for this path, post for that path, la 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 la, and it takes HTTP requests, then you can use this. And this applies to Node, to Spring, to, I don't know, there's the list in the Lambda adapter project that you can check some examples, but basically anything that it's routing HTTP 1 or 1.1. Uh, type of HTTP. So how the Lambda adapter works? Well, basically you can trigger this function using the Lambda adapter and we'll do the kind of uh, conversion from the incoming events to HTTP when a Lambda function is invoked, as I said, with API gateway, Lambda functions URL and load balancer. And that will translate all the uh, events into HTTP and then it will convert back the response from the app into uh, whatever these services take as a response. So a response on API gateway, a response for the Lambda function URL, or a response for the load balancer. So that's great. The Lambda adapter works as a Lambda extension. So basically you just add a layer into your Lambda function and that will basically um, execute before your Lambda function handler starts and will create uh, all the necessary connections and will be able to take the request and transform them. If you want to know how the Lambda adapter is built, well, it's built in Rust and it's using the last custom runtime. And I, there is way more details on implementation and how you can do it and, and all the code is open source. So I will leave you the link of this in the description box because it's not really relevant for your lift and shift migration. So now let's go to the code and see this in action so you can see how simple it is. So first, this is the page from the Lambda adapter. You don't need to do anything with it. This is just uh, for me to show you where you can find the documentation and how it looks. And um, you, I will give you the, the layer uh, ARN, but it's also there for you to find it. So the first thing we are going to do is to build a simple node application, node express application. So I just created that uh, one with simple roots that have different things. So you can see that this is working and it's really translating. And then basically I just starting this uh, local host server. So you can see that everything is working. It's just a super simple uh, node application and you can build more complex things. And, and we will talk about that later in this series. So basically everything is working. We can try the different path and everything is acting as it should. We can pass query string parameters. If we want to oppose with a body, we can. If we want to do a delete, whatever you can do because this is a node express application. So that's great. Now we have this application and what we are going to do is create a CDK project because I'm going to do this with CDK. You can do it with SAM, you can do it with Terraform, it doesn't matter. So basically I will initialize a new uh, CDK project and I already did so we can check uh, how it looks. But this is a TypeScript CDK project. I will open the infrastructure and you can see here that we only have one stack. And this stack is uh, basically only having a Lambda function, a layer and a Lambda function URL. So this is a super simple stack and we have the layer. Here uh, is the, the layer name. You can find the latest in the GitHub repo. And that one is the, the layer. Then we have the Lambda itself. And this is uh, basically just running node because that's uh, what I want this Lambda function to be. Then we have the um, the URL, the path where we have the, the, the Express app. Uh, so basically I copied, pasted inside this uh, CDK project. So it's easy. So it's in that Express app demo. Then we have the handler and here you can see that it's run.sh and this is basically the initialize uh, where the code will start and this basically will start your node application in this case but it can be any way that you will start your application so we will look at that later then we have a couple of environmental variables what is the level of the log and then uh, where is the bootstrap information and this is configuration from uh, the Lambda layer that you need, you will find more info in the Lambda adapter. Then we have the memory size of this function. I will give one gig and the same for the duration. I give five minutes um, 
Play with the duration depending on what you're doing. This is a very simple app. You don't even need to tweak the duration with, I think six seconds is more than enough. But well, there is uh, some loading and building of your application when you're running this. So that have that in mind. And then we are having the layer there uh, that is the adapter. Finally, I'm using a Lambda function URL. You can do API gateway, you can do load balancer, it's okay. Uh, here, I'm just basically creating a new Lambda function URL. If you don't know what are those, the link is in the description box. And I'm just inputting that URL in my um, output whenever I'm deploying the application. Then you can see that we have the app, and this is exactly the same app. I just copy paste it into uh, my CDK project, and I copy paste it with the modules and the package log. So if you don't have those, make sure that you run npm install to install all the dependencies of your Express application or whatever um, application you're using. You need all the dependencies in there for this to work. So make sure that you have that. Then I copy paste the, or I created the run sh. And in here, I just put what is the command I will do in the terminal to initialize this application. In this case, node app.js, that's the simplest node express application. And that's kind of the only change I do to this application for it to work. So that's uh, basically it. Everything that we need is uh, working in here. So now what we will do is deploy this thing. So CDK deploy, like we will deploy any serverless application, any CDK application, and then when it's deployed, I come back. So when this is deployed, we get the URL and we just paste it in the browser and this will be invoking the Lambda function and it will be translating that request to the Node Express app and we will get exactly the same output. So if we go to the serverless console and we basically see the logs, so we can see if something is happening, if the Lambda function is getting invoked, I just use the serverless console for that. If you don't know what the serverless console is, it's one uh, extension for Visual Studio Code that is amazing. And basically we can see here that there is some uh, logs and it seems that everything is good. And the interesting thing here is that you have logs in your um, Express app they can translate into your Lambda log. So whatever you put as logs in your uh, Express app will appear in your Lambda log. So this is like running if you want to debug or if you want to make sure that everything is good, you can do it. But if you want to make sure that everything is good, you can also run this application locally because it's a Node Express app. So basically you go to the path, you run Node app.js and you can run it locally. So it has that benefit as well. So if you deploy again, we can see the log. So I will basically execute again uh, that URL and we can see in the logs now that things are appearing. So you believe me <laughs> that you can really see what is in the logs. If we try different path, uh, we can try the, um, the different paths that we have in the, in the browser. We can see that if we put like, I don't know, hello, then we will be able to uh, reach a different endpoint and that will also print different logs. And basically by just putting the right endpoint in the, in the URL, it will take us to the right place in the Express Node app as it was running in a server. The thing here is that every request is running against a Lambda invocation, and this can be running in a warm Lambda or in a cold Lambda. So if you have multiple requests happening at the same time, it will uh, start a lot of invocations of that Lambda function. It will start a lot of executions of that Lambda function. So the cold start is there. If you have a um, like shorter request, like in this case, that is returning very snappy, then you might always hit a warm Lambda, so the performance is very good. So that's something to have in mind when you're working with these things. And because we are in a stateless world, everything, if we are running multiple different Lambda functions or on the same application, you cannot rely that there is something in there for you to take again. So that will be a thing for the next episode in this series. So that's it for me today. I hope you like this type of video. You are asking a lot for migration content and I'm building something really cool. I will be delivering this in chunks during the next weeks. So stay subscribed, stay tuned to this channel and I see you in two weeks with another episode of Wah. Ciao, ciao!